Action is brought to you in part by your Southeast Toyota dealers, Roses, Kubota, and by Apple Computers. The ACC Championship game just moments away from the tip-off as the Duke Blue Devils take on the Tar Heels of North Carolina. At the press conference after yesterday's win over Virginia, North Carolina head coach Dean Smith said, yes, the good news is we're in the championship. The bad news is we have to play the Duke Blue Devils. But I've got to believe, Dan Bonner, that he may have told his team before they came out on the floor today, you know, they did beat us twice during the regular season. Well, of course, that's what the coaches do. They always look for any little psychological ploy they can get. I don't really know that if one team is better than another team, there should be any reason why they can't beat them three times. But the coaches always do talk about that, and that's on the, that was on the minds of both of the coaches when we were able to talk to them. And we had a chance to speak with Mike Krzyzewski about the third Carolina Duke matchup of the season. I don't like to play games and say somebody has it easier than us or whatever. It's whatever your lot is, you do that to the best of your ability. Where we're at is that we've beaten them twice. We won the regular season, and we have to play with the same type of emotion as they might use in the reverse psychology. If you've lost to them twice, they beat you. You know, it's tough to beat a team three times. You know, all that baloney. I, I don't even want to get into it. I, I just want our guys to play hard. And if Carolina you know, plays that hard, then it'll be a great basketball game. And that's the only way we're going to win. And there you see the two head coaches, Dean Smith of North Carolina, Mike Krzyzewski of Duke. And this has really developed into quite a rivalry. The Duke-Carolina rivalry has always been there, but in recent times, it's been the Krzyzewski-Smith rivalry that's garnered a lot of national attention. Of course, Dean Smith has been around for 30 years. He's won 712 basketball games. He's the king of the hill. And when anybody challenges that king of the hill role, then that's that creates some interest and think about over the years the guys that Dean Smith in basically his king of the hill position is knocked back down there's Lefty Drizel and Norm Sloan and Terry Holland there's been a lot of people who has brought his team in to compete against Dean Smith's North Carolina team the one who's been most consistently successful over the longest time really has been Mike Krzyzewski though you know who has the best record against Dean Smith of all the ACC coaches. It was Bones McKinney. <laughs> all Bones beat Dean eight out of ten times. And he's got the best record of any opposing coach against the Hall of Fame coach of the Tar Heels. Well, later in Charlotte, they're going to have the Southeast Regional. The Final Four is going to be here in a couple of years. But they'll be hard-pressed to beat this kind of media coverage that we're enjoying today. Three television networks are represented. All eight radio networks, 23 radio stations are broadcasting the game today. The television stations on our ACC network, and of course this game is going nationally on CBS, and over 100 from newspapers are being represented today. It's quite a gathering. It is quite a gathering, and it's really a great gathering for those of us who are in the media. It's nice to see everybody we don't see all year, so it's a big party for the media as well. And they will have a lot to chronicle as Duke and North Carolina play. We talk about this tournament and how magnificent it has become over the years. Just take a look at the attendance. When it first started, of course, back at Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, a ticket cost $5 to get in. Then you move up to Greensboro in 1971 when they enlarged that building. And now to this magnificent arena where over 23,500 ACC fans will watch today's championship game. Say no more, it's Duke and North Carolina. We'll let the players take over from here and get the starting lineups as the Duke Blue Devils and the North Carolina Tar Heels get set to tip it off in this ACC championship game. Two years ago, these two teams met in Atlanta. Turned out to be J.R. Reed's final game as a Tar Heel, and North Carolina won that championship. We'll see what happens today. Now let's go to public address announcer John Edwards. Coliseum in the championship game of the 38th annual Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tournament. Here are the starting lineups. First for the second seed, the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina. Starting at one forward, a 6A senior from Nassau, the Bahamas, number 44, Rick Fox. At the other forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia, number 34, George Lynch. At the center position, a 6'10 senior from Utah, Alabama, number 32, Pete Chilcutt. 6'4", junior from Burke, Virginia, number 40, Hubert Davis. And guard, 
six foot senior from Binghamton, New York, number 21, King Rice. And head coach of the Tar Heels is Dean Smith. Now the starting lineup for the top seeded Blue Devils of Duke University. Starting at one forward, a 6'7 freshman from Western Virginia, number 33, Grant Hill. At the other forward, a 6'6 junior from Capitol Heights, Maryland, number 23, Brian Davis. At the center position, a 6'11 junior from Angola, New York, number 32, Christian Lindner. At one guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Lancaster, Texas, number 12, Thomas Hill. A six foot sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 11, Bobby Hurley. The head coach of the Blue Devils is Mike Krzyzewski. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski of the Duke Blue Devils in search of the ninth ACC title for Duke, Carolina, bidding for its 12th championship. The opening tip off is next. I need to work 30 miles, sometimes in ice and snow. And my Toyota 4x4 gets me there, no problem. My father used to worry about me before because my previous car always broke down on me. Now with my Toyota, I have low maintenance. Kind of helps out the old pocketbook. I did want a Toyota, so they really worked with me. They gave me an extremely good deal. My Toyota is like a security blanket. It's a comfortable feeling. You know, you can feel you can go anywhere and not have to worry about it. Toyota, more for your money. G-Series with four-wheel steering from Kubota. A capacity crowd here at the Charlotte Coliseum. Duke and North Carolina in the regular season, a sweep for the Blue Devils. And what strikes me, Dan Bonner, about the results is what's happened in recent history with these two. Duke has won three of the last four in Chapel Hill, and Carolina has won two of the last four in Cameron Indoor Stadium. <laughs> Here you can get a look at the first meeting in Durham. You notice Thomas Hill there with 23 points, 39 points off the Duke bench. North Carolina with only 60 points, 35% field goal shooting. Duke obviously doing a fine job on the defensive end of the court. Rick Fox led the way with 18. The second meeting, you see both teams shooting the ball a little bit better. Hurley with a big game, and King Rice talked about that game that Hurley had in our little interview that we were able to do with him. Uh, very, very good shooting performance by Hurley. And so King Rice is very concerned about that. Duke is just a different basketball team when that young man is going to hit the outside jump shot. He burned NC State yesterday for 16 points. Chill cut and Leitner. Jump it. And the Tar Heels have the basketball. Here's King Rice. Man-to-man -man defense for Duke. Watch the Rick Fox Thomas Hill matchup. Back dooring Thomas Hill. Fox missing the shot. And Leitner keeps it alive, but into the hands. Fox a fadeaway. Count it. Dan Bonner, one thing that we've seen in this tournament for Carolina, starting with the second half of the Clemson game, relentless pursuit of the offensive rebound. They have used their size to do a tremendous job on the boards. And who you see here, Chilcutt just doesn't quit, knocks the ball out of Leitner's hands. Fox recovers, and as Leitner pushes him out toward the free throw line, he hits the jump shot. Where did not the North Carolina? They just dominated the boards against Virginia yesterday. It was one of the most impressive rebounding performances, particularly on the offensive boards that I've ever seen. We've talked a lot about the King Hurley matchup. Interesting to see if Rice really goes after him today. Rice is obviously going after him there, and that's the result. Fox to the bucket. Five up the Tar Heels. Bobby Hurley picked up his dribble out at midcourt. Nobody came to help out. Hurley's going to have to beat that pressure from King Rice. Good start for North Carolina. Here's Thomas Hill, strong to the basket. Gets his own miss. Lynch clearing to Rice. Tar Heels looking to make it 7-6. And a foul in 
side on the track. He is Weiss pushing, or rather, uh, Rick Fox pushing off. Bobby Harley did a great job getting back in the transition defense and getting his body in front of Rick Fox to force Fox to come over his back and commit the foul. Carolina in going after the basketball. It looks a lot of times, Dan, like they are going over the back. And in talking with Mike Krzyzewski, he says if we get good position, we'll get our share of those calls. You can see Lenny Wirtz chasing Mike back to the bench there. Mike unhappy early. But then coaches tend to stay that way, particularly in big games. Man-to-man -man for North Carolina. That's a good double team right there. North Carolina very aggressive defensively. And Rice set the tone on the initial possession of the game. Davis down the lane. And Duke is on the scoreboard. It's good movement by Duke against tough, tough pressure. See what kind of pressure Duke can apply. of people in the basketball the first couple of possessions very very good nothing will take away defensive pressure like ball movement and people movement like the Tar Heels have shown Christian Leitner a three-pointer is short and she'll cut with the easy board Weiss left alone didn't pull the trigger Fox does Carolina offensive rebound now Dick Paparo says hell ball the possession arrow will give it to you North Carolina has come out of the blocks very strongly Bob they're playing very aggressively on defense they're really a pushing technical the ball foul, excuse me Dan a technical foul have just been called on Mike Krzyzewski by Lenny Wirtz of course we saw just earlier Bob where Lenny Wirtz was chasing Mike Krzyzewski back to the bench and Mike who was a little upset is really mad now. I have no idea what all that is about. Now Wirtz is going to go back over toward the Duke side. Now keep in mind the technical against Krzyzewski. One unsportsmanlike technical. He will get only one more. Fox at the line. Hitting the first of two. Rick has scored six here in the early going. And of course that was a technical foul that was called while Duke had possession of the basketball. So that's the same thing as a turnover that leads to an easy basket. North Carolina gets two free throws. They get the ball. The Tar Heels already up by seven have a chance to go up by nine or ten. There was a possession arrow that favored Duke before the technical. And Dick Paparo is getting his signal straight with Lenny Wood. Well, what they're talking about is with the technical foul, they're saying that the possession arrow didn't really change. There was a jump ball call, it was Duke's possession, but what they've agreed upon is with the technical foul, North Carolina gets the ball on the alternating possession, so the next jump ball, it will be Duke's possession. Wow, Chilka, my gracious. And a personal on Pete is first. We talked about North Carolina doing a great job aggressively attacking the boards. You mentioned about blocking out. Nobody blocked Chilcott out that time, but the Duke players had the basket surrounded, so Chilcott had no choice but to go over the back. Turnover, Bobby Hurley. King Rice leads the Tar Heel Express. And a great rejection that time by Thomas Hill. Grant Hill did a great job stopping the ball. Another bad pass by Hurley. And now the ball belongs to North Carolina. Appeared to be just an inadvertent whistle right there. Wild action. Grant Hill stops King Rice, forces him to give the ball up to Davis, and that gives Thomas Hill the time to recover. That's excellent transition defense. But I'll tell you what, if the Duke Blue Devils have to play that kind of defense all day, it's going to be a long day for them. Carolina leading at 9 to 2. Rice takes early inside. Comes up with it and rolls it in. 
pretty good strength by King Rice. A couple of hands on that ball, but he sticks it in the basket anyway. 11 to 2, North Carolina. And Duke throws it away. That's three consecutive turnovers by Bobby Hurley. And five for the afternoon. Rice will come out in favor of Derek Phelps. And Bobby Hurley will also come out of the game. Bill McCaffrey has checked into the Duke lineup. Not a good start for that young man, and Mike Krzyzewski is going to talk to him about it. Got to be careful you don't get down on yourself as the game starts bad. George Lynch travels before the feed to Chilka. North Carolina being very aggressive. It looks like they're trying to deliver the knockout punch here in the first round. Duke only two points in the first four minutes of the basketball game. They're fortunate to only be down by nine. Davis tipped away. Joe Cut comes up with it. it was tremendous defense by North Carolina. The Tar Heels have looked great. Lead 11 to 2. And the steal by Derek Phelps. Phelps loses control, but fouled by Grant Hill. Bob, the Duke Blue Devils have done a nice job defensively, which is the only reason that they remain even in any sort of position in this basketball game, because the North Carolina Tar Heels are dominating them on the other end of the court. How about on the floor? To two. Now this word from our good friends at Natural Light. You know, for outstanding food and great service, you can't beat a cruise on the SF's good times. Thanks, Stu. Ooh. And with cold Natural Light, good times are only natural. <laughs> Having a good time? Oh. Where there's good food and good times, it's only natural. Natural Light from Anheuser-Busch. <laughs> hey, Stu, a cold Natural Light for the lady. Stu's a good man, but he does tend to go overboard with the natural light. <laughs> Fact. The full-size Ford pickup has more repeat buyers than any other pickup. Fact. The full-size Ford pickup sales lead over Chevy is wider than last year. Fact. Our most popular model is priced $600 less than a comparably equipped Chevy. Call it leadership. Call it winning. Call it anything you want. The simple fact is, Ford is number one. Save now during Leadership Month at your Ford dealer. Without a doubt, serving our customers is the number one priority we have here at Rosie's. As you know, we have spent tons of money on technology and store design and layout and signage and lots of other things. But it all means absolutely nothing if we don't take care of our customers in a first-class manner. And you know about our Customer First program, under which individual associates are rewarded for giving outstanding customer service. We will have great customer service here at Rosie's. That's our promise. A look at Tar Heel head coach Dean Smith, the former baseball coach at the Air Force Academy. He's thrown a high hard one to the Blue Devils here. He has certainly brought in a team that's ready to play basketball. The last five Duke possessions, if you count the technical that was called on Mike Krzyzewski, have resulted in Duke turnovers. And it's very difficult to score in this game if you don't get any shots. Here's the early Duke woes. Seven turnovers, twice as many turnovers as shots. Not a good sign. <laughs> the Blue Devils. Rodel, that's a charge. Thomas Hill takes the punishment. The North Carolina defense has been so good, Bob, that you tend to forget the fact that Duke has played pretty well on the defensive end of the court here, too. There's an excellent move by Thomas Hill to draw the charge. That's the only thing that has kept Duke from being down 22 to 2 rather than 11 to 2. They have made some spectacular defensive plays. We can't move, son, okay? Hold Early and Rice is still on the bench after the timeout. Right, Koo back in the game for Duke. This is McCaffrey. North Carolina in the zone. Koo back. Grant Hill. 
Finds his way around Lynch and puts it in. Duke stays in the man-to-man -man defense. There's Montross in the game. We talked about him early as a person possibly who could be a factor. Carolina possession. North Carolina now has turned the ball over on three consecutive possessions. Oh, looking and in it goes to Montrose. It's a pretty good safety valve. Well, I would say so. He is so big. Reese. Boy, that's a nice move. And there's Montrose with the tip. Leitner had to go and help. And you let a seven foot guy alone next to the basket, and you're going to have a problem. 13 for Tar Heel. Montrose had Leitner wrapped up. Eric's first foul. Good cut by Leitner, but a very long entry pass. Here's Reese. There you see Leitner coming to block the shot. McCaffrey does not get down in time to block out Montrose. I think even if he does get down in time, he's swatted away like a fly. Hill. Montross clearing for the Tar Heels and North Carolina looking to push it ahead. Backdoor cutting. Phelps Ooh, over to Lynch. Oh, just missed it. I believe they're going to call that foul against Leitner, and if that's against Leitner, that's foul number two, and it is against Leitner. And he is the man, Dan. That sets the tone for this Duke team. In their half-court offense, he's the guy. What an athletic play by Phelps to catch that basketball, maintain control, gets it to George Lynch. Leitner does follow him with the body. There's no question that he jumps into him. Clay Buckley will come in to take his place as Leitner heads to the bench. And this is much more adversity than I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski was interested in having in this particular ball game. His team down nine. They've only scored four points in the first five minutes and 40 seconds of this basketball game. And now his number one offensive weapon has to take a seat on the bench. What a difference a day makes. Yesterday, Duke all over NC State in the early going, leading 22 to 7. It's been the Tar Heels day so far. Lynch hits a ball. 15 to 4 North Carolina. With Hurley out of the basketball game, Grant Hill going to do more ball handling in the backcourt. McCaffrey, he finds the range of three pointer with a sophomore from Allentown. And a travel on Phelps before the collision. North Carolina. As Dean Smith is well aware, has certainly had opportunities to blow this game wide open, Bob. You get the idea they're right on the verge, but you can see North Carolina four turnovers, most of them recent turnovers. Bobby Hurley back for the Blue Devils. Not a great deal of offense in the game right now for Duke. Kubek banks it in. Plenty of hard and aggressiveness, though. Kubek with a real nice move to the basket. Kubek, a big key in the win in Durham over the Tar Heels. Nine points, six rebounds in 19 minutes. Gets that basket to open his scoring day. 15-9, Carolina. Back door, Phelps puts it in. Phelps has really gotten a lot of minutes in this tournament. Played extensively yesterday against the University of Virginia. You get in the ball game, you play well, you earn more time. There's the trap. Nice job by Lynch to get over there and cut Hurley off. Boy, what a play by George Lynch. Kubek open on the wing. Lynch got there quickly. Kubek leads it short. Now George Lynch trapped on one side, Bob, and went across the court to the other side to bother that shot. Show. Absolutely right, Bob. The George Lynch show, offensively and defensively. 19-9, Tar Heels by 10. Thomas Hill. That's a tough shot. And it goes for it. Shot bucket of the game. Shot's head right over Montrose. 19-11. Kubek was going to get him in a headlock there. Off Fox, Duke basketball. 
Good defensive pressure by Duke. Thomas Hill playing that flat passing lane very, very well. And I think the defensive pressure that Kubek applies to George Lynch handling the ball out front certainly has something to do with that. Kubek had 10 points against North Carolina in the game in Chapel Hill. So not only did he have that nine in Durham, he had 10 in Chapel Hill. He has played well against the Tar Heels. And hit three threes last Sunday. That's his first one today. 14 Duke within five. Duke in his zone. Fox finds the three point line. That's McCaffrey great defense. It. And Duke throws it away. McCaffrey took off down court. That's the correct play by McCaffrey. He sees Kubek getting the basketball. He wants to get out and go. Unfortunately, Greg is going to be off balance as he gets this rebound. McCaffrey makes the great recovery and blocks the shot. As Kubek gets the ball, he's fallen out of bounds. There's nothing he can do with it except try to get it to McCaffrey. 11.45 left, first half. Duke climbing back into this championship game. Fact. The all-new Ford Escort is the best-selling small car in America. Fact. The new Escort has the highest owner satisfaction of any car in our history. Fact. Escort has more repeat buyers than any car in its class. Call it leadership. Call it winning. Call it anything you want. The simple fact is, Ford is number one. Save during Leadership Month at your Ford dealer now. How to get a sound night's sleep. Place your home under the watchful eye of your nationwide agent. Then, mix in discounts for fire alarms, smoke detectors, and security systems. Add a claim service that's ready day and night. And don't forget to put out the cat. After making it on Broadway, some of the finest entertainers around go off Broadway. They appear on the pleasure ships of Norwegian Cruise Line. No other cruise line offers such entertainment. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus... Duke of North Carolina tackling in an ACC tournament final for the 13th time. And and uh, or in a tournament, I should say, for the 13th time. And you see the series is tied at 6-6. These are some of the tournament championship results. You see the one from two years ago in Atlanta at the top of the list at 77-74. Duke in the ACC championship game for the fourth time in the last six years under Coach Krzyzewski. Bob, Carolina basketball. Bobby Hurley, who had the great game yesterday against Chris Corciani, scored 18 against North Carolina the last time. To this point in the game, has no points, no assists, and four turnovers. And you'll recall that it was a game at North Carolina last year that Hurley turned it over 10 times. Duke in the zone defense, playing it very aggressively, trying to trap the ball when it goes to the corner. Davis, right out of the money. With Kubek right in his face. Kubek was in pretty good defensive position. Hubert Davis led the ACC in three point percentage this season. Grant Hill lodged to the basket. What a fine move with the dribble. Reese had the baseline cut off. Hill just took a back dribble and then exploded to the basket. McCaffrey trying to come up with a steal. It went off Rogier out of bounds. The ball game started off with a flurry of Duke turnovers, Bob, but since that time, it's been North Carolina turning the ball over. That's now turnover number six by the Tar Heels, and you just get the idea that maybe they've let the Duke Blue Devils off the hook here. Early throws it into the backboard. Davis picks it up. And scores. Turnover number five by Bobby Hurley, and early in the basketball game, he just looks totally disoriented. Kubek finds Grant Hill. What a lift Kubek has given him coming off the bench. That young man's having a tremendous game in his final ACC tournament appearance. Leighton are getting ready to come back in the ballgame. 
kill cut. That's why they need Leitner in there. Just not enough size in the Duke lineup without Leitner. But of course, if Leitner comes back in, he risks that third personal foul. You wonder how aggressive he's going to be when he re enters the game. Grant Hill. Wilford Rogier clears it off of the Tar Heels. North Carolina looking to take that lead back to double digits. Four points for King Rice. Dean Smith was up telling his troops to get the ball up the court, and they sure did. There's Hurley picking it up out at half court again. King Rice doing a tremendous job defensively. Oh, oh. About Carolina. Duke is just not getting very good shots at the basket. North Carolina able to exert heavy defensive pressure. And Duke's half court offense just isn't as effective without Leitner in the game. Chill cut. High off the glass. Rozier keeps it alive and scores. The rebounding isn't effective, as effective without Leitner either. North Carolina just really taking advantage of some holes in the Duke lineup right now. Side. A big stack of the players at the scorer's table. Early to Buckley for some relief. And King with a holding foul. Oh, oh. North Carolina will take that foul. Rice and Phelps have been playing very well in tandem, and so you put a lot of pressure on Hurley. You keep the pressure on Hurley. Not going to get that call every time, so you can afford to be aggressive. is going to play it in wholesale changes for each team each team has the luxury of a pretty deep bench Bob they can put some guys in the game who can play North Carolina has a great deal more size on its bit on its bench early the two hills of Davis right now for Duke you see right away what Christian Leitner means to the Duke Blue Devils Phelps she'll cut Fox Lynch and this man Hubert Davis another three point North Carolina's playing well. And what a weapon the Tar Heels have in the outside three point ability of Hubert Davis. 33 20. Hill on the cut. Thomas Hill had a foul. And a foul. Thomas Hill really bails out his teammate. Grant Hill's going to get into the air and he's stuck now, but it's Davis. It's not Thomas Hill. It's Brian Davis who's cutting to the basket. Does a nice job getting there. We talked before the ball game about how Hubert Davis and his outside shooting ability could really help North Carolina spotting up well behind the three point line and drilling. 6 6 junior from Capitol Heights, Maryland, Brian Davis, 72% shooter at the line this year. Tar Heels leading by 13. Davis puts it in. Is seven points per game. One of the most solid defenders in this league. The North Carolina advantage stands at 11. Here comes some Duke pressure. And that is going to be an over and back. Rick Fox picked up the ball at precisely the place where Duke wanted him to pick up the ball, just over half court. It's a perfect double team. Now watch where he's going to catch the ball. Now he picks it up. Great job by Leitner. Fox is stuck, and he throws the ball into the backcourt. Very close call right there. Hurley misses the three. Ooh, Leitner very close to that third foul. Is a good block out by George Lynch. Joke travels. This game has been an adventure so far, Bob. A lot of running up and down the court, a lot of turnovers. North Carolina with a big advantage so far. And a timeout to talk about it. 7.51 left in the first half. Tar Heels by 11. MC Hammer, rap star and Pepsi drinker. Well, today, we secretly replaced his Pepsi with Coke. Let's see what happens. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. Emma! Robber.
just a reminder that U.S. Air has more daily departures than any other airline in the free world. Most people think there are two ways to buy gasoline. Credit for convenience and cash for savings. But at Chevron, we think you should get both convenience and good prices. 1215, 1215, sir. sir. No matter how you pay. So whether you use cash or credit, now there's just one price for one great gasoline. Chevron, we're with you all the way. North Carolina leading Duke 33-20, two here in the first half. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime for the Norwegian Cruise Line Trivia Contest. You can win a great cruise for two. Mike Krzyzewski's team in the regular season against North Carolina and Dean Smith, they were even in rebounding in one game and beat the Tar Heels on the backboards in the other. Both Duke victories. Today, Carolina has out-rebounded Duke 12-6. to You see the field goal shoot. Field goal shooting not really that bad. North Carolina, though, with those extra opportunities that they've earned with the turnovers in the offensive board. Now North Carolina in their 1-3-1 zone. Go on, Tony. Hill gets it inside to Antonio Lang, and he had it blocked. Phelps. Box off the window. I thought the backs were closed to North Carolina. So. Oh, stop that. <laughs> That zone defense with Montross in the middle, it makes it very difficult to shoot the ball close to the basket. Not going to get very many layups with the big guy in there. Going to try to penetrate in, and I think you're going to probably have to settle for the 10 to 12 foot jump shot. Leitner kicks it out to Hurley. Good looking inside. Got to wonder about Hurley's confidence. He's had the turnovers early, missed his first three point shot. Thomas Hill missing. Here's Brian Davis to put it home. Boy, what a rebound. And Davis, he got the ball to the basket, and Montross was sitting on the floor. So it helps if the big guy's sitting down. He's not quite as effective as a shot blocker from that position. He's only six foot two, kneeling. <laughs> Phelps to the corner. And Carolina hangs on to it. The open man is Henrik Rodel. North Carolina just with a tremendous job from behind the three-point line. A unified three for Germany's Henrik Roden, 38-24. Three for five from the three-point line for North Carolina. What we have seen in prior games with Hurley as Hill misses the three, tipped into the hands of Brian Davis, and he's fouled by Montrose. You were talking about Bobby's confidence. They will reset him. Hurley, uh, Leitner will kick it back out to Hurley and spot up for that three. He's taken. He's had a couple of opportunities to launch it and is shot away from that shot. And I think that's a big key for the Duke Blue Devils. Hurley knows he's not playing well. Five turnovers. He took one three-point shot and he missed it. And so you just have to wonder what's going on inside that young man's head. And let's remember, it's not like he's a 35-year-old veteran in the NBA. He's still a young kid. This is only his second college season. And uh, the confidence is a frail thing sometimes. Now, there's a very confident young man, Rick Fox, the senior. He's going to sit down and catch a breather. He started out of the blocks very quickly. Nine points for North Carolina. Brian Davis has scored six. You see his season numbers. Three, four, three at the free throw line this afternoon. Lifetime in ACC tournament play, just 5 of 16 from the field. But he's been called on today. Gets some buckets inside, and he has responded. Greg Kubek checking back in as Davis gets a rest. 5.58 left in the first half. 38-26 North Carolina. North Carolina spreading it around offensively. Nine different guys have scored for the Tar Heels. Early for the steal. And McCaffrey picks it up. Weaves his way through traffic. Shot blocked by Roller. Excellent defense by Roller. Can Henry control it? Yes, but into the hands of Hurley. He runs into a big roadblock and squeezes the pass to Kubek. Well, he squirted that devil out of him pretty effectively. 
Linton Montrose had a pretty good double team. Real good defense by Roto the last time. Thomas Hill lost the handle. Now gets it back. That ball slippery. Kubek. Leading by 12, make it 14. Ryan Reese, the 10th Tar Heel to score in the game. You hear so much about the Duke defense, and they do play very good defense, but North Carolina in this ballgame has not given them an opportunity to set that defense. Leitner's second basket of the game. The Tar Heels pushing the ball up the court very, very quickly, forcing Duke to play transition defense almost every time down. Montross. Took the basket rim with it. Forty-two twenty-eight Tar Heels. Biggest lead of the afternoon for North Carolina. Thomas Hill into that baseline. And Phelps comes over to block it. Hill took an awful long time getting himself set to shoot that jump shot, and you have to figure the presence of Montross in there. A big factor. Phelps coming over blocking the shot. There's the Duke bench. They're not very happy with what's going on. Leitner makes the pass now as Hill catches it. He's got to get himself collected and turn to the basket. He fakes because Montross is coming and then Phelps comes from behind and blocks the shot. Excellent team defense by North Carolina. Deep Joko returns for the Tar Heels and he is staring at Christian Leitner. Bob, while Duke has not been able to set their half-court defense, North Carolina has had the opportunity to set theirs. Early missing the three. Kubek can't hang on. Tar Heels take it. And Hubert Davis brings it ahead. We were talking about emotions in the pregame. Long faces on that Duke bench. Tar Heel bench loving every second of it. Looking to extend the lead. Rogier. Oh. Another offensive rebound by Chilcutt. Kubek the foul. Chilcutt just flat beat Christian Leitner to the basket. You don't know whether Leitner he is a little worried about picking up that third foul, but you see Leitner there in the middle of your screen. Doesn't really do a good job blocking out Chilcutt, who gets by him very quickly, and Kubek gets the foul reaching in. Leitner picked up his two personals early. Consider this for the Duke Blue Devils. Christian Leitner has four points. Bobby Hurley doesn't have any points. It's no wonder that they're in big trouble against North Carolina. Pete Joka, his third point this afternoon. He had 18 against Duke last Sunday in Chapel Hill. 14 points and 10 rebounds in the game at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Third team all ACC member. North Carolina adds two more points to its advantage. 44 28 Tar Heels. We'll be back. Drivers often don't live with the consequences. Fact. The full-size Ford pickup has more repeat buyers than any other pickup. Fact. The full-size Ford pickup sales lead over Chevy is wider than last year. Fact. Our most popular model is priced $600 less than a comparably equipped Chevy. Call it leadership. Call it winning. Call it anything you want. The simple fact is, Ford is number one. Save now during Leadership Month at your Ford dealer. I can talk to you guys until I'm blue in the face, but nothing seems to get through. Have I got to drill it in your heads? It's a fundamental rule, people. One of the first things you should have learned. Even a little baby's know it. So how? How? How many times do I have to repeat myself? Repeat myself. Repeat myself. It's just three simple little words, OK? OK? OK. OK. One more time. Drink your milk. Drink your milk. Drink your milk. Milk. It does a body good. 
Hey, milk speech again, huh? What makes you think that? Some of the highly touted freshmen for the University of North Carolina you see contributing very well early in the basketball game. Montross four points and three rebounds. And he just gets that big body in there. He's got good hands, picks up the basketball there and dunks it. It's like he pulled the rim down and then put it in. He's coming back in the ball game. You saw that Rogier with four rebounds, Montross with three rebounds, Hurley struggling. No points, no assists, five turnovers, has missed both shots that he's taken. Thomas Hill, who scored a total of 30 points in two games against North Carolina, only one of seven from the field. We said Leitner only has four points, so you're not getting any offense from Hurley, from Leitner, from Hill. It's hard to beat anybody, much less a team that's playing as well as the North Carolina Tar Heels. North Carolina doing a very good job changing defenses, giving Duke different looks down the court. Here they are in the 2-3 zone. And the foul on Rick Fox. If you're Mike Krzyzewski, do you tell your team we want to get it to 10 at halftime? Two Such goals you for tell the last them, four tell minutes. Score. Here's Leitner. He's going for now. They're going to call that an in the act of shooting. So Leitner's going to go to the free throw line. Two fouls now on Rick Fox. Well, one of the things that coaches are always telling their teams, Bob, is that we can't. There's no such thing as a 16-point play in basketball. So we've got to chip away, and we have to start playing by the possession. We've got to have a good possession. We've got to get a good shot at the basket, and then we've got to get back on defense. And the more good possessions we have on offense, the more good series we have on defense, and we're going to cut into that lead. Lakers are missing that opportunity. Announcers for this game selected and compensated by Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports. And the use of this broadcast without the express permission of Raycom and JP Sports is prohibited. Leitner goes 1 for 2, his fifth point of the afternoon. 44 29 Tarheels. Duke is a team that's known for its defense, and they have to start producing on the defensive end of the court. Four three, got it. Four three pointers in the first half by the University of North Carolina. That'll open up a defense. Leitner turns to shoot. 47 31, North Carolina. It's hard to come back when you're going to trade three for two. North Carolina comes down and hits the three. Duke gets the basket by Leitner, but they still lose a point in that sequence. Lynch to the bucket. Too strong. Kept alive by North Carolina, but rebounded by Grant Hill. Good decision by Leitner to get out of there. In to Christian. The right-hand hook. Too that strong. Was, that was not a good shot. Rice all the way through to the trailing box. And that's just not good play by the Duke Blue Devils. They had three guys back, but nobody's turning around looking for Rick Fox, and he gets an easy one. Carolina has, from start to finish in this half, Dan pushed the basketball up the floor. Leitner, a two-pointer. They just had the Duke. They came out early, and they attacked Duke and got a first five points in the basketball game, rocked the Blue Devils back on their collective heels, and Duke has never recovered. with a minute left in the first half has Crawford Palmer at the scorer's table trying to come in for Christian Leitner so Leitner's really got to be careful. Under a minute to go in the half. Leitner will take the three and hit it. 12 points and he's scored the last seven for Duke. 35 seconds left in the first half. The shot clock is off. North Carolina. That's the clock in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Going to spread it out and hold the ball for the last shot. Might not be a 
bad idea to take it on the dribble and attack Christian Leitner. See if he can get a bonus here. Get his third personal foul. Now Carolina gets into its offense. Fox, the leaner, no good, but Hubert Davis is there. Tip by Chilcutt. Oh! Leitner's got it, and that's the half. Impressive first half of basketball for the North Carolina Tar Heels. And I think the Devils can consider themselves fortunate to be down by just 13. Halftime coming after this word from our good friends at Natural Light. Today's ACC action is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, Ford, Norwegian Cruise Line, Diet Pepsi, and CND, and by Natural Light. Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, Infinity, True Value Hardware, Gillette, Buick, and by Food Lion. All right. Along with Paul Cameron, Bob Rathbun, Dan Bonner here at the Charlotte Coliseum. Here's that point guard comparison. We had a graphic up a minute ago, but this is correct. Hurley, no points and uh, only one assist. Those five, he didn't have, doesn't have five assists. He's got right. five turnovers. And there you see King Rice obviously having the advantage in the first half, but they don't put him in the books at halftime. And that uh, the Duke Blue Devils, I'm sure, hoping that that is their salvation in this particular game, that they've got another 20 minutes of basketball to try to catch up. Carolina yesterday had a big lead against Virginia and the Cavaliers made a major surge in the second half. And do you think that there's the slight possibility that the Tar Heels may have discussed that at halftime. <laughs> I think so. North Carolina started this game so aggressively with such strength. I think that Dean Smith would really like to see his team start the second half the same way. The early portions of the second half are very important in every game but I think they're crucial for the Duke Blue Devils right here. I think they've got to make some kind of a run early to get the game on a much more competitive level than it is right now. The Tar Heels lead by 13 as we begin the second half. Look how far off Bobby Hurley King Rice is playing. Hurley. King Rice is right in the middle of the lane helping out against Christian Leitner with Hurley outside. He was paying no attention to him on that particular defensive series. Hurley in the corner gets the basketball and drives it to the basket. Grant Hill is fouled by George Lynch. And that time, again, with King Rice playing off Bobby Hurley, Duke moved the ball to Hurley quickly. You can see Rice was not in real good position as he had to hustle to recover. And Hurley does a nice job penetrating to the basket. Didn't see much of that from Bobby Hurley in the first half, and I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski considers that to be a good sign to start the second. Grant Hill with six first-half points for the Duke Blue Devils. A 62% foul shooter this season. And if you're going to try to make a comeback against this type of a lead, Bob, if you're Duke, you have to try to cash in on the vast majority of the opportunities that you get in the second half. And these are opportunities, free shots, that are going to be crucial for the Duke Blue Devils. And Grant, nothing but eight. The Tar Heel lead was 18 at 47 29. It now stands at 11. Davis inside Fox. Great feed. North Carolina spread the court. Duke's help was simply not there. Very easy basket for North Carolina. They've done a great job breaking down the Duke defense. Fingertips of Thomas Hill. A Duke turnover. Man to man defense by Duke. Davis with some defensive heat. Lynch on the baseline. He'll fire it up and just missed it. 
That was pretty good defense by Duke that time. Leitner takes chill cut to the baseline. Tipped up by Bryant, uh, by Grant Hill, but rebounded by Chilka. Hey. Hubert Davis. And a foul call on Bobby Hurley as he tried to wrestle that rebound away. Bob, we showed you in the halftime stats that North Carolina with a big rebounding advantage, and they hit the offensive board very strongly to start the second half. The pass to Hubert Davis. Nobody blocks out George Lynch. Look at that. On the inside, both Rick Fox and George Lynch have the good position. Duke simply not doing a good job on the defensive backboard. Rice. Bobby Hurley is struggling, but King Rice is having no problems with his confidence. What a game he's playing. Leitner driving to the basket. It in. 14 points for Christian Lechner, 53-40 Tar Heels. And North Carolina will be quite content to trade baskets with Duke. And go one up. Fox a three-pointer. Five three-pointers in the ball game for North Carolina. That's the first one in the second half. Thomas Hill's baseline shot doesn't go. Kept alive by Grant Hill, but Fox finally clears it. North Carolina just too much strength inside for Duke. The Tar Heels grab this game by the throat in about the first five seconds. They have let go. 56 40. And a bucket here will equal their largest lead of the game. Back door to Fox. Rick with 18. The Tar Heels by 18. He's going crazy. Carolina fans enjoying it too. Hurley's three. Short. Fox ahead. Lynch to the basket. Carolina by 20. Timeout, Duke. Sixty forty. Tar Heel majority. It's happening. Some people are climbing out of their imports and getting into the 1991 Buick Regal sedan. Why? One simple, overwhelming consideration. Quality. Buick quality. It's something you might want to get into yourself. Regal from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America and beyond. You got the right one, baby. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. You got the right one. Uh -huh. Everybody. Uh -huh. Oh, time to see. the right one. Uh -huh. There's only one right one, baby. You got the right one, baby. With 100% Nutrisweet. <laughs> We've owned this business for 12 years now. Rick's the numbers guy in Pete's ideas. He keeps us from killing each other. <laughs> well, somebody's got to. <laughs> and we never really thought much about how much we depended on each other. No. Not until what happened to Joe last month. That really threw us for a loop. It could have been gone just like that. And then where would we be? Well... I could have had his office. And I could have had his what? parking place. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, but it, of course. Of course. No, no, you, you know what? You don't mean that, right? <laughs> we can split up this plan. Guys, right, you just talk. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. North Carolina administering an old-fashioned whipping to the Duke Blue Devils, and they're being led by Rick Fox with that back door and dunk. Instant replay right here. Rick Fox, another great job getting position inside and scoring. Fox with 18 points. Look at that block out by North Carolina. Chilcutt gets Leitner. Fox gets Davis, and down the court they go. 16-34 remaining.
everybody that you talked to preceding this basketball game talked about how they thought this was going to be a very tight, hotly contested contest, but North Carolina has dominated every facet of this basketball game. From the inside, as you just saw, from the outside, Duke has never been in the game. Oh. Leitner turns it over. Yet another example. The pressure that King Rice has been able to apply to Hurley, very effective. Chilcott and Leitner pushing against one another. Mike Krzyzewski saying that Leitner was pushed. That was a tough pass to handle. And the result is a Duke turnover. Lynch stripped and taken away by Leitner. Defense against that pass. Kubek. Grant Hill. Leitner. Kubek. And the foul. This one on Chilka. That is the best work of the day for the Duke Blue Devils on the backboard. North Carolina has dominated the board up to this point. Duke working very hard. Kubek. Who gave Duke a little lift early in the first half when he came off the bench. Misses the first shot. One offensive rebound by Grant Hill. He puts it back up. Leitner's going to get another tip. Kubek is going to recover the basketball, gets fouled by Chilcott and puts it in. But it's really the first time today that Duke has had a flurry on the offensive board. We've seen a couple of those by North Carolina. Three-point play for Kubek makes it a 17-point game. In case you were wondering, the biggest blowout in tournament finals history came in 1968. State 87 to 50, a 37 point margin. This one currently stands at 19. Leitner to the bucket. 16 for Christian Leitner. King Rice talking to Lenny Wirtz as he dribbles the ball up the court. really on them now. They know that they've got to get a big defensive sequence every time down the court. So too, Dan, once they get something out of their offense. Absolutely, and this really puts some pressure on a team that everything's got to be done well. Leitner gets some room, but is fouled by Lynch, and he'll shoot a pair. This last couple of trips down the court, Leitner has done a tremendous job catching the ball. The pass is poorly thrown. Leitner's going to catch this one. Watch him look. He sees where the out-of-bounds line is. He steps back in, just gets the ball up so he can get himself in better position. Leitner working very, very hard in the ball game. Third foul on George Lynch. And Leitner to shoot two. He is one of two at the line this afternoon. 16 points. Christian Leitner ranks in the top five in the ACC in points, rebounds, field goal percentage, block shots, and surprisingly steals. Tremendous low post defender. Fourteen twenty-four left. Crawford Palmer is going to let uh, Christian catch his breath on the bench. And remember, just because Duke is trying to make a comeback in the game, they still have to substitute. Leitner's still got to take a blow every once in a while. So it's very important that the substitutes maintain the pressure on North Carolina. What oh, good movement by North Carolina. Something they've exhibited this entire game. Lynch to the line. When you move on offense, you just put such pressure on the defense. They can't really set the pressure against the basketball, and they can't. And it's so tough to guard cutting players, defending against screens. Lynch 
gets an opening because of good movement without the ball and draws a foul. Much has been made, particularly thanks to NCAA tournament history of Duke at the Meadowlands. They've gone nine and one there and eight and zero in NCAA tournament play. But there is certainly some magic in the Charlotte, North Carolina Coliseums over the years for Dean Smith of North Carolina. The Tar Heels in the city of Charlotte, 96 and 12 all time. And looking to win their third ACC title in this town. With the kind of record that North Carolina has historically, their Kubek is going to get fouled by Lynch. That's the kind of tradition they had, Bob. They've got a heck of a record in every town in which they play. <laughs> Indeed. on Lynch I think that's foul number four on George Lynch and so he's going to have to go out of the ball game. That's a pretty nice thing to be able to do a guy like George Lynch goes out and Rozier comes in. Grave Kubek co-captain of the Blue Devils. He's played three previous years for Duke all three resulting in trips to the final four. Opportunity for the Blue Doubles there. As you pointed out, Dan, they have to take advantage of everything given to them. And free throw shooting at the top of the list. Nine points this game for Greg Kubek. 62-48. 1350 left. Christian Leitner coming back to the scores table to check in. Davis throws it up and off. Kept alive by Rozier, but Hurley stepped out of bounds. Just has not been Bobby Hurley's day. He ropes up to me again. And Jerry Donahue tell him, do not talk to me again. The captains are the only folks supposed to talk to the referees. They're not supposed to say much. <laughs> <laughs> Davis. You know, that's great defense by McCaffrey. He had his hands in there, stopped Davis, a tough shot. It's going the Tar Heels way. I think everybody in the building expected Duke to make a run, a serious run at North Carolina. But much to the Tar Heels credit, they have not allowed that to happen. They continue to maintain their intensity. They're making Duke take difficult opportunities and the way you make a run is you get a series of easy opportunities and you convert them and North Carolina just simply hasn't allowed that to happen. And that is going to be a blocking foul on Bill McCaffrey. McCaffrey never really got himself set in defensive position. And those are the kind of calls that have to go Mike Krzyzewski's way if his team is going to make a comeback in the ballgame. Joe cut his back. Reese out of the game. 12-43 remaining in the second half. 64-50 North Carolina. Late there. There's one of those steals we were talking about out of the low post. Ahead it comes to Hurley. Thomas Hill doesn't go for the three. Loses the ball. It's an opportunity you have to convert, Bob. North Carolina doing a nice job getting back on defense. Tar Heels have been superb on the defensive end of the court all day. And you can see what the result is. Duke doesn't get two that they ought to have down on the other end. And North Carolina comes back, attacks inside, and gets an easy two. Twelve minutes remaining in the ACC championship. Kubek for three. Jill Cup blocked him off superbly. Over to Box Ross. Ahead to Fox, and it's a two-on-one. One of the rare times in the second half, the Tar Heels took it away. I think Duke got their hands they on did, the basketball. They did touch it, indeed. Carolina will maintain possession. And an official's timeout on the floor. Dean Smith of the North Carolina Tar Heels leading Coach K and leading big. 66 50. This from Budweiser. Nothing beats a bud with a friend. Nothing beats what we've got here. Nothing beats clean, crisp, cold. Nothing beats the king of beers. Yeah, nothing, nothing beats. 
Hey, I know plumbing. I'm the one that connected these pipes. I know every inch of this sink, and I know when I'm stuck. Well, Jerry, they don't make that setup anymore. What? But you can do it even better with the parts I've got here, and they'll last you a lot longer, too. Yeah, I know every inch of this sink. But now, I know a little better. You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. What do you call a car that has learned to use the wind? A car designed to settle in when you race into it head on and stabilize when it buffets you from the side. Road and Track called it one of the 10 best cars in the world. But it is probably better known as the Infiniti Q45. Elsewhere on this championship Sunday, Missouri in the Big A final, leading Nebraska by eight in the second half. Big Ten regular season, Iowa trying to pull off the win over Ohio State. Princeton, B.D. Carrill's team routing Loyola Marymount in the second half in New Jersey. Stay tuned for the NCMB Players of the Game Award brought to you by NCMB. Bob Rathman, Dan Bonner, Paul Cameron back with you as the Tar Heels. Wow, look at those numbers. Bob, they're getting great opportunities. They've broken down the Duke defense. They're getting the ball close to the basket, and they're converting. And that is going to be a foul on Rick Fox. Trying to hold off his defender. Rick Fox has done a good job, particularly in this second half. We've shown you a couple of replays where he's got an excellent position inside. He's holding off Thomas Hill. That's a very, very good call. You can't do that. Can't stick that arm out there and hold somebody behind you. But for Duke now, time is growing short. They've got to start converting some opportunities and chipping into this lead. Leitner. Thomas Hill again outside the three-point wing gets closer. This is the back shot. Fox the rebound. Great movement in the zone defense by North Carolina reacting to the Duke passes. Tip ball. It to a teammate. What a tremendous play. Incredible. I don't believe what I just saw <laughs> from the reaction of the Duke bench. This is a great trap. Phelps is in serious trouble. Fox is just trying to tip the ball away from the diving Hurley. It goes off Hurley. It goes right to Phelps. Great hustle by Rick Fox. You've heard of thinking on your feet. That was playing on your stomach. Three. Still hasn't scored in this game. Duke now three for 12 from behind the three point arc. Early with a steal, but out of bounds. It's been that kind of a day. Ten fifty two remaining. Tar Heels by sixteen. If Rick can get him inside. Montross. Six points for the freshman from Indiana. Boy, that kid can really play. He can really be a factor inside. Not too many teams in the country have anybody that big to guard. Christian Leitner misses it off the window. The Tar Heels can take it back to 20. 21 with a three. Takes it away for Duke. Hurley. Grant Hill lost the handle. Fox trying to take the charge. Bob, we talked about the pressure that it puts on you to be 18 points down with 10 minutes to go. You just try to make plays that aren't there. Phelps. Tries 
again, scores. Foul on Lazer. And when you're the team that's 18 points ahead, boy, is it fun to play basketball. Not very much pressure on you. You can go and play hard. That's a great bounce pass across by Roto. Phelps gets the ball up on the board, and then Leitner, in trying to block the shot, gets himself out of position. And notice that Thomas Hill just stands and watches. Nobody steps in and tries to block anybody out. All the guys from Duke with their feet flat on the floor. It's just been a very, very rough afternoon. Derek Phelps with an eye to the future. As you mentioned, Dan, earlier, getting some very valuable playing time, backing up King Weiss at the point. He missed four games earlier with a sprained left knee. Back strong. Picks up his fifth point of the contest. The biggest lead for North Carolina. Weiss back, belts out. Tar Heels by 21. Tips it, but Davis that did nothing but trigger the break. Hubert up and in. And Leitner's down and he's hurt. Bob Leitner did tip that ball. He was trying to get the rebound. Max Crowder, the Duke trainer, Mike Krzyzewski, the head coach, to check on him. That's the only thing that can make this game a more complete disaster for Mike Krzyzewski and Duke. Leitner's going to tip the ball, and he comes down, turns his ankle, steps. Grant Hill maybe have stepped on him. See if we can get a better look. Looked like he stepped on. Well, it is. It's it's Grant Hill he steps on. I thought maybe he stepped on King Rice, but it's Grant Hill he steps on. He goes down. Looked like it's the ankle. They're not I working on the, the ankle. Knee it looked perhaps Dan just from a, our vantage point maybe hyperextending that knee when Grant sort of fell into him and then collided. Just a guess. You said Bob the only thing that makes the turns it into total and complete disaster when you're getting your head handed to you is one of your main guys gets hurt when you've got the NCAA tournament coming up. Seventeen remaining. Seventy-three fifty, North Carolina. Fred Kubek in the land of the Giants, blocked by Montross. Montross never jumped to block that one. Just put both those hands up in the air and swatted the ball away. Davis, a three. Seventeen for Hubert. Three three-pointers. It's. 650. Oh! Buckley to follow. Man to man defense by Duke. Again, they're trying to pressure the basketball, Bob, but it's very, very difficult. You try to apply that pressure, and that opens some opportunities, and North Carolina's been moving well and passing well today. They've been finding every weak spot. Fox, Montross, the foul on Buckley. And obviously, when you have a lead of 24 points, you tend to play with confidence. North Carolina just sure that everything that they shoot up there is going in the basket. Montross in the tournament, four points, two rebounds against Clemson, seven and five yesterday against Virginia. George Lynch with four fouls comes back in for North Carolina. Chilcote to the bench. And Eric Montross. To that foul line. There are a lot of freshmen outstanding today. Be hard for us to find somebody who hasn't played a great game for North Carolina. <laughs> a number one seed against a number two seed here this afternoon. And the last time the number two seed won was in 71. That was the famous game in Greensboro when Joyce out jumped Deadman and Tom Owens laid it in at the buzzer. 
North Carolina making sure that there's none of those kind of heroics at the end of this game. Yeah, but George, nowhere to be found today. Up his fourth foul. If we can get word on Christian Leitner's condition, we will pass it along to you. 7.59 left in the second half. And a timeout on the floor. Rick Fox with four fouls comes to the Tar Heel bench. Carolina in a runaway. Today, U.S. Air pumped 3 million gallons of fuel, cleaned 49,000 seats, swept 400 aisles, and showed 175 little boys and girls to the restroom. We served 40,000 meals, 53,000 soft drinks, and cleaned up 250 spills. We checked 240,000 bags, flew 160,000 people, and said thank you about half a million times. And you know what? It's still not enough. Thank you. U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. To those import owners who said they would drive an American luxury car when they make one good enough, here's one that's much, much more than good enough. Test drive the 1991 Buick Park Avenue and see how good the great American beauty truly is. Park Avenue from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America and beyond. You know, today our customers are getting pounded in their wallets like never before. At Rosie's, we are dedicated to helping. No other store does more for its customers. We have low prices, special sale events every week, double coupons, and our Golden Days Club for senior citizens. At Rosie's, we give our customers more ways to save every day. That's our promise. Back at the Charlotte Coliseum, no second-half drop-off for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. In fact, they're better from the floor in the second half than the first. And for the Duke Blue Devils, it's gone from bad to worse. Christian Leitner bangs his knee with Grant Hill. He's down. He's sitting on the bench. No word on his condition, at least that we have. 18 points, 5 rebounds. During that timeout, he was pacing up and down in front of the bench, limping noticeably. So the kind of a game that we have here today is Kubek hits the three. I don't know that we're going to see Leitner anymore. Of course, Duke is OK. That shows you how much I know. Here comes Leitner walking up. He's coming back in the game. Never mind. Too bad they don't have erasers on microphones. <laughs> Gee. That's really not very nice. Hey, I know what it feels like. Here's Rice. He's in there three seconds. Gets that pivot foot in there. Pivots around. 77-55 Tar Heels. 7.33 left. It's hard to make a comeback in a game where you trail by 13 at halftime when you're only going to shoot 23%. Kubek, though, warming up from the outside. Back-to-back -back threes. 77-58. The defensive play. Possession, though, belongs to North Carolina on the Hill Paul. George Lynch turns to square up. Kubek times it perfectly, ties the ball up. Excellent play by Kubek. Kubek has 15 points in the basketball game. His season high 19. Davis. Going to work on the other Davis. And Kubek knocks it away. Now the senior in the ACC championship. Not going down without a flop. Late in their travels. Boy, that's the way it's gone all day for Duke. And Mr. Leitner having a few words for referee Jerry Donahue. Boy. He's lucky he didn't get a tee right there. Wow. <laughs> I have to believe that Jerry Donahue didn't hear it. Selective hearing loss, perhaps. Well, if you're a lip reader, <laughs> a field day. Carolina scores again inside, this time Ryan Reese. 
Mike Sosefsky's all over the referees on the other side of court. There, Kubek now with three three pointers in a row. Mike's already got himself one technical foul. He gets another, he gets to leave early. Lynch. Six minutes remaining in the basketball game. The Carolina lead is 18. Chill cut back doors and is fouled by Lightyear. Lightyear with just a good aggressive play. He was fouling him, making sure that he didn't get the ball up to the basket. Referee stepping in there between him, and Christian Leitner puts a hand down to try to help Chill cut up. Here he comes over the back with the foul. Obvious foul, but Christian Leitner extending that hand to Chill cut, trying to help him up off the floor. Great backdoor cut. Pete Chill cut two for two at the free throw line this afternoon. He has scored six. Everybody contributing to the Carolina cause. And I think that's been a key to the basketball game, Bob. Rick Fox with the big game, obviously, for North Carolina. Chill cut three steals to go along with those points and rebounds, but everybody has made a contribution. Chill cut with a 81 61. North Carolina by 20. Under six to play in the championship game. Late there to the basket. Releases some frustration. George Lynch feel pretty good. Leitner continues playing hard, drives to the basket. George Lynch. Right, gives that a good throw. Here's the last time Leitner takes it to the basket. He gets the dunk. Nobody gets in the way for that one. Carolina's going to call a timeout. Five seventeen left. Duke. Has cut it back to 81-65. Dean Smith stopping the clock, and we'll be back. On the road, the Infinity Q45 becomes a living, breathing thing. You feel it work the wind and seize the road. Feel the embrace of leather and luxury. The rarity of a 278 horsepower V8 engine that was born to run. And begin to understand why Road and Track has named it one of the 10 best cars in the world. That's my son. You know, he could grow up to be one of the world's great doctors. Yeah, maybe a brain surgeon. Uh, of course, that'd be years of medical school, big bucks. Maybe he'll just be a, a famous lawyer. And then there's law school, more big bucks. Actually, I think he'll make a great politician. He already knows how to get everything he wants. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. Warning, cold starts can be tough on your car's engine because your motor oil might not reach some of its parts for a full minute. Fact, independent lab tests confirm whether it's 35 below zero or 50 above. Quaker State 10W30 gets to all your engine parts faster than other leading 10W30s. At 40 degrees, it's three times faster. So don't let cold starts make it tough on your engine. Get Quaker State. It's one tough motor oil. The Pizza Hut game summary, Carolina 58% shooting afternoon. Duke 39% and no factor out front for Bobby Hurley and the Blue Devils. It's going to be very hard for Duke to beat many teams if Hurley doesn't score at all. Certainly not a team like North Carolina that has played as well as the Tar Heels have played today. You know, they came out and they decked Duke the very first thing, and they haven't let the Blue Devils up off the canvas. The closest has been here in the second half, 49-38. It's now 81-65 with 5.17 left. Chill cut. That's really nice ball movement to keep the pressure. Four corners. Fox. With 
10 seconds on the shot clock. All the Duke fans trying to help the officials. I'm sure they appreciate it. Four seconds. Rice. Oh. Nope. Follow. No. Fox. Blocked. Out of bounds to Duke. But that did take 50 seconds off the clock. 81-65 Tar Heels. And upset the Big Ten today. Iowa defeats Ohio State. 80-69. You know, Bob, everybody was conceding that number one seed in the Midwest region to Ohio State. They've lost two in a row. I don't know. I do know that Grant Hill just scored 14 points. 81-67. Fox all the way. with 22. Oh, you love when your seniors play their best of the big games, and Fox has done that for the Tarheels. Lynch gets the rebound and leads the break. King Rice puts it in. 85-67. Now for Kubek. And that is a career high. He's hit five three pointers, four in the second half. Fox with an answering three. Anything you can do. <laughs> well, there haven't been many things that the Tar Heels haven't done today and done very, very well, Bob. An extremely impressive performance. Grant Hill just dribbled it off his foot out of bounds. <laughs> I can't help Dan but think back to that ACC championship game two years ago in Atlanta. Carolina came out, different set of players, but Carolina came out on a mission. And they sustained that intensity for 40 minutes and won that basketball game. And they seem to show that those same components today. They took charge of the game at the start, maintained the intensity throughout, and for their efforts, an 18-point lead. Leitner bats it out of bounds. We talked about the team that came out, Bob, and was able to funnel their emotions into intense play, and we thought that the team that did that the best was going to win the game. Well, North Carolina certainly has done that today. Duke has just looked a step slow all day long. Fox to Rodel. Moving the ball back outside. Don't need any more points. Need to run that clock. And Kubek <laughs> with the foul. <laughs> Playing the ball. The ball's on the other side of Roto's body. <laughs> Roto goes down hard. 101. It's team foul number eight against Duke. The sophomore from Germany. Averages just under four game. Hit a three-pointer in the first half today. One of ten. Tar Heels to score in the game, and now a technical foul has been called on Christian Leitner. Well, he's sort of been looking for that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shoot a one and one. Rodel still gets the one and one shot opportunity. Then there's going to be a two, two shots. So there will be two shots to technical, and then North Carolina will get the ball back. And Leitner has gone out of the game. Buckley's in replacing him. I do not know what all that was about, except that Leitner was looking for trouble and he found it. Very frustrating afternoon for Duke. I think that's what you can write that off to. King Rice will shoot the technicals. Mike Krzyzewski's team coming into this ballgame was playing very, very well. 
You talked to all the Duke people, and they were just very pleased with the way their team was performing. They thought they were coming together, that they were really on a good roll here. And then to come in and just get their ears so thoroughly boxed, as has happened today, is a very, very difficult situation. And remember, we're talking about kids here, and Christian Leitner just letting his emotions get away from him a little bit. Now the final of today. Princeton in the tournament as the Ivy League champions, defeating Loyola Marymount. And I go back to a point I think you made maybe Saturday or Friday when we were sitting around the press tables and chatting between games. Momentum in tournament basketball means nothing. Oh no, it has nothing. Tournament basketball, one shot and out, just it, it really doesn't mean anything. North Carolina has had the advantage today. They've used their size, they used their intensity to just keep Duke from doing anything that Duke could try to accomplish. Two shot foul. 90 to 70. Coming in for the Tar Heels is Brian Reese. The freshman from the Bronx. And Rick Fox, the senior with a team high 25 to lead North Carolina to the bench. What a great feeling for that Tar Heel senior. tournament even if Duke loses this game that they probably get the number one seed in the East but after this tremendous blowout I think all that is up in the air could be that the Tar Heels are looking at the number one seed in the East although the NCAA tournament selection committee usually emphasizes regular season performance you have to wonder what this kind of a blowout what effect that'll have so this will raise some eyebrows in Kansas City there's no question has just begun. Frustrating afternoon for Bobby Hurley. Thomas Hill only one for 11 field goal shooting. Bobby Hurley with no field goals. Flying loses. Lundstrom, Sullivan, Harris, Cherry, and Salvadori in for the Tar Heels. Salvadori inside, reverses and scores. Everybody getting into the act for the Tar Heels. 94-72. Scott to the bucket. Fouled by Buckley. 
17.9 seconds remaining. Last Sunday, it was Duke that was doing the celebrating in Chapel Hill. Roll reversal in Charlotte for the ACC championship. It's the largest margin of victory for one team in the ACC Finals since that 1968 game that we mentioned the, earlier today. Carolina beating State 87-50. Scott Cherry, sophomore. Twelve Tar Heels have scored in the game. Bob, and you have to wonder what this does to the confidence of the Duke Blue Devils headed into the NCAA tournament. 6-72. Clark misses. The follow goes for Lang. Five seconds remaining. At the buzzer, Sullivan. And the North Carolina Tar Heels are the ACC champions. seems to get through. Have I got to drill it in your heads? It's a fundamental rule, people. One of the first things you should have learned. Even a little babies know it. So how? How? So how many times do I have to repeat myself? Repeat myself. Repeat myself. It's just three simple little words, OK? OK? OK. OK. One more time. Drink your milk. Drink your milk. Drink your milk. Milk. It does a buddy good. Hey, milk speech again, huh? What makes you think that? ACC Basketball has been brought to you by U.S. Air, Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, Central Fidelity, Budweiser, Buick, and by Food Lion. Travel arranged through U.S. Air with nearly 3,000 daily departures to over 170 cities, including London, Frankfurt, San Juan, Bermuda, and Nassau. U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. The final score here at the Charlotte Coliseum this afternoon. The North Carolina Tar Heels 96 and the Duke Blue Devils 74. Carolina for the 18th time winning at 25 games in a season. And a sweet one today. After losing two in the regular season to Duke, they burn the Blue Devils to take the conference crown. Our NCNB players of the game for North Carolina, Rick Fox, 25 points and six rebounds this afternoon. And for the Duke Blue Devils, a career-high 21-point effort, but in a losing cause, Greg Kubek of the Duke Blue Devils. We'll be back with more from the Charlotte Coliseum in just a moment. Stay with us. The Tar Heels are the champions. It's happening. Some people are climbing out of their imports and getting into the 1991 Buick Regal sedan. Why? One simple, overwhelming consideration. Quality. Buick quality. It's something you might want to get into yourself. Regal from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America and beyond. Quaker State's lubrication guarantee is tough enough to protect your new car's engine for 250,000 miles. You could run out of roads before you run out of Quaker State protection. Because Quaker State is one tough motor oil.
Diane Hoffman, assistant professor at the University of Maryland School of Law, will be the featured speaker at the second NCCJ Dawn Patrol Breakfast, Tuesday, March 12th at 7.30 a.m. at the College of Notre Dame. For ticket information, telephone 523-1000. A tumultuous cheer in this building for Dean Smith. His Tar Heels have just won the 1991 ACC Championship. You see his record. Boy, he's been phenomenal in this building, winning seven of the last nine games ever played in the new Charlotte Coliseum. But you can color this town, Charlotte, North Carolina, baby blue, as Dean Smith and the Heels have won 97 times in 109 appearances in Charlotte. Tar Heels have won it 96 to 74. We'll be right back with more post game in just a few minutes. Here are 10 good reasons for you to shop at True Value hardware stores. up with any others we'll be here to help you can do it with true value hardware stores from gillette comes sensor the only razor that can sense and adjust to the individual needs of your face sensor blades are mounted on responsive springs to continuously sense and individually adjust to your face the closest safest most comfortable gillette sensor together with the richness of foamy shave cream for the best shave a man can get announcing something you've never seen before in an inexpensive macintosh color Rick, a tremendous effort, 25 points today. What does this victory mean to you? It brings back a lot of memories from my sophomore year, and not only did we beat a good team, but we won an ACC tournament championship, and I hope it means the number one seed. <laughs> so that's really, you're really thinking about that? Definitely, we're not satisfied. This is a great feeling right now. We'll celebrate for this court right now, but when we leave the court, we go on to bigger things. Certainly seemed to be very well prepared, came out and jumped right on top of them. What was the philosophy going in? We felt that no one person was going to win the game. We felt that it would be a team defense that did it and a lot of patience on offense. Thank you very much, Rick. Congratulations. Outstanding effort. Let's go back to Paul Cameron. All right, Dan, thanks so much. Uh, Rick Fox has got to be the award winner for the Everett Case Award, I would think. It is uh, going to be announced in just a few minutes. And, you know, we have talked about Bob Rathbun talking about uh, the 1989 championship. And so reminiscent of that uh, two years ago when J.R. Reed was the MVP of the tourney. Rick Fox uh, most probably will get that in just a few minutes from right now. We certainly want to thank all the fine people here at JP Sports and Raycom Sports and Entertainment. Folks in the truck who do a great job. For Bob Rathbun, Dan Bonner, and all our entire crew, this is Paul Cameron thanking you for joining us. This is the 1991 ACC Championship in Charlotte. We'll be back to Charlotte one year from now.